let me start with the evangelical. <laughs> uh, you're familiar as a convert with the whole Catholic idea of grace, but tell me how you looked at grace versus the graces, you know, the Catholics thought that by doing better things they earned stuff versus, you know, what we call sanctifying grace, which you would have called the final act yeah. that, that you needed. That, that's what Christ got for you, once saved, always saved, or whatever. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. We never used, and I never heard, the word graces, the plural. Uh, we talked about the God's blessings and so on, but grace was the category, uh, and it was only after I became uh, an Anglican <laughs> that I began to hear the word graces. But for us, uh, the grace of God uh, was all-encompassing, which indeed the church teaches, the Catholic Church teaches. Um, it ended up, I think, in practical terms for us spiritually, uh, for me as a growing boy and an adolescent and a young adult, uh, in uh, a notion that uh, Jesus Christ has done everything uh, which is necessary for my salvation at the cross, again, good Catholic doctrine, uh, but that um, there was something eventually a, a bit cheap, what the Lutheran theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer spoke about in one of his book, more than one of his books, um, that, that there was no price for me ever to pay for anything that I might have done. There was no, no well, I never heard the word reparation, never heard the word reparation. To us, that would have sounded like uh, someone who did not believe in the grace of God. Essentially, the grace of God just gave us a whole load of freebies. Uh, and when it came to, to sin, uh, I myself was not brought up this way. Uh, I mean, I think my father instilled in us uh, the notion that there are, in fact, grave sins. We never used the word mortal sin never heard that term. Well, I knew Catholics believed in it. Uh, but there were grave sins. But it is apparently the case, I have run into this uh, in my adult years and since I've become a Catholic, uh, it's apparently a very widespread and very firmly held evangelical notion, I won't call it a doctrine, that there is no hierarchy of sins. That if, if I have just a whiff of irritation, uh, or just a moment of impatience, As or just a, a hint of vanity when I take umbrage because somebody hasn't given me my proper due. There's no difference between that and if I had been perpetrating Auschwitz. There is no uh, qualitative difference at all. Uh, and of course, that comes from not reading the Bible. We were the ones, I mean, the Bible was our book. Catholics didn't know the Bible or have anything to do with it. The Bible was our book, but we didn't read uh, where the New Testament says, but there is a sin unto death. Uh, and the, 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 there are very grave sins. So it, it, was a, it was a rather easy ride. And also in terms of grace, like it was always clear to us that they was, you know, sanctifying grace that was given to you without your merit. When you were baptized, you were given the right to enter heaven. You were unworthy, you had no right to it, whether you were a baby, whether you were an adult, whether you were on your deathbed, if you were baptized, you accepted Christ, you got sanctifying grace, and um, you obtained, you had no right to it. It was just pure gift, pure love, pure divine intervention, and, and that was kind of like your, 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 your freebie, so to speak. And the only way you could lose your freebie is if by deliberate yeah. meeting three conditions, serious, you know, and effectuating and so forth, you did something mortal. Whereas the grace of, um, you know, they often said the more you overcome venial sins, for instance, the more you grow in grace. And, and, and the more you grow in grace, you'll be less likely to fall into mortal sin because you, you participated in the daily life. I, I guess if, if I had to give a translation to an evangelical in the Bible, I would use Paul's language you transform from one degree to another. Like, what is that process? Um, are you going to say it's, you know, it's actual grace that's being, you know, parceled out to you? I, I suppose it's just a, a theological economy of grace we're talking about. We talked uh, very much, it was a daily part of our vocabulary, of growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, quoting scripture. 
uh, growing in grace, and that was what one was doing uh, by reading one's Bible and praying and so, so on. Uh, but I think there was a, uh, a kicker back here at the Reformation, that, and we never quite put the two things together. Luther had a little f Latin phrase, simul justus et peccator, uh, that there's no difference between the sinner and the just man, and his metaphor uh, was a ghastly, macabre metaphor. It was that uh, a redeemed soul is nothing but a pile of dung, Luther used the colloquial, uh, sprinkled over with the blood with the with snow and that's how God sees us the snow is the righteousness of Christ uh, it has made no difference in the real me the whole thing is a legal fiction now Luther would never have called it a legal fiction yeah. but it there is a, a strong tendency in not only Protestant theology but it ends up in uh, the spirituality of many evangelicals that it is a question of, of, of legal fictions. Uh, nothing has, I'm just as bad as I ever was. I will never get any better. The Holy Ghost isn't transforming me as from glory to glory, from one degree of glory to the next. Uh, there, there's Luther's metaphor. God just sees me. He, he, uh, inaugurates a legal fiction where Bill Jones or Tom Howard has not changed, but there is a sprinkling of white over this filthy soul, and that's the righteousness of Christ, and I will accept that as a legal fiction. And the Catholic, of course, it, it's almost incomprehensible to a well, Catholic. Well, the Catholic and the Orthodox would say, no, there's an incarnation, and that mound of dough is going to be turned into a temple of yes. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Orthodox use very strong language, which, which yeah. even the Roman Church doesn't often use, but they call it a theosis or the, or the deification of man. And of course, a Protestant hears that and thinks, oh, there you see, uh, it's pantheism or something. But what they mean is we are, and it's pure scripture, we're made to participate in the life of God. We are made sons of God. We will reign with Christ. We are, this is the destiny of grace for us to, to make us share in the life of God. Uh, that's, that's what our destiny is.